you very much. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Susanna Emery, as you can see. I really wanted to say a great big thank you for letting me come and talk at this awesome conference today. <laughs> that was, you know, totally not forged in any way, I promise. <laughs> So, uh, first of all, I wanted to acknowledge the traditional owners, which has already been done today, but I just think it's really important to reinforce that. So, like I just said, I am Susanna. Um, I'm a game designer and a PhD candidate and teacher at Curtin University. Um, I was lucky enough to be recognised on MCB Pacific's 30 Under 30 for the last couple of years, and uh, on the list of 30 women in the games industry this year, which was pretty cool. Um, something else pretty important, but a little harder to talk about, is that I'm a survivor of domestic violence. Uh, unfortunately, though, this isn't unusual, and as the statistics on this slide demonstrate, one in three Australian women have experienced physical violence, and one in four have experienced emotional abuse. Uh, at this point in time, for me, as is the case with many DV victims, my self-esteem was so low that I questioned every thought I had and every feeling that I felt inside me. I didn't feel strong enough to approach domestic violence services on my own, and honestly, I didn't really feel like I deserved to access them. Although I was isolated by my abuser from my family and friends, I was still able to communicate with them a little bit on Messenger and Skype. Sadly though, when I did reach out to my friends and family and start talking about what was going on, most of them didn't know how to respond and because of that, they didn't really know how they could help me. Some people, including those really close to me, kind of told me to leave the relationship and even became angry and frustrated with me for not being able to just leave, as they put it. They didn't really seem to understand how difficult that would have been for me or even how dangerous that can be. And in fact, uh, frighteningly, abuse can often become even worse when someone leaves or attempts to leave the relationship. Now, I'm really sure that my friends and family did want to help me but they just really didn't know how. This quote from the Domestic Violence Resource Centre demonstrates that I'm not alone in wishing that my friends and family had a deeper understanding of DV and how they could help. It says, my family knew I was being abused and that I felt trapped, but they felt they didn't say anything about it until I finally left. It would have helped if they had said that his behaviour wasn't okay, because I thought it was normal. If they had said that I was a good person and that they were there if I needed them, it would have made getting out a lot easier. Thankfully though, during this time, I met a new friend who was incredibly supportive. To help me see that the way I was being treated was not okay, my friend worked with me to help me rebuild my self-esteem. It was only when I was able to see that I deserved to be treated better that I was able to begin to understand the situation I was in. As my self-esteem improved, my new friend worked with me to develop plans to help keep me safe. I stayed with my friend who helped me access DV support services and a counsellor who gave me some strategies on how to cope and plan ahead. The image on this slide shows an example of a safety plan. No, it doesn't. There we go, thank you. <laughs> an image of a safety plan template available for Midlist DV support services. So a lot of DV support services provide checklists like this that people can work through with families and friends who are experiencing domestic violence just to help them organise what they might do if they're escaping, what they might need to be able to do to keep themselves safe and how they can best do this. On average, an abused woman may leave her partner up to seven or eight times before she breaks away for good. And although this statistic is women, men often do experience domestic violence and they may need help and support about that as well. And not just men, but people who identify as any gender might experience domestic violence. There are complex reasons for this, including fear, threats, and often promises by the abuser that they'll change their ways or change their abusive patterns. As part of the journey, I was forced to return home several times, but my friend never judged me or became frustrated with me for my choices. They were able to understand the complexity of the situation and support me throughout, and that's really what I needed in that situation. <laughs> Thankfully, with support, I was able to make it out safely. 
Friends and family are often the first to recognize when things aren't right. And I think it'd be really great if everyone experiencing domestic violence had a friend like that. A friend who understood some of the complex elements involved in DV, who gave non-judgmental support and helped victims to access support services. And I think that we can all work to make sure that we can be this friend to somebody if we need to. It's for this reason that my latest project, Hannah, is so close to my heart. Hannah is a chat-style interactive narrative game I'm developing for both iOS and Android devices. With the support of Curtin University, Hannah is designed to strengthen the support networks around those experiencing domestic violence and help family and friends provide relevant support to those survivors. This slide contains a promotional poster and header image for Hannah. At Curtin University, I research ways that games can help us learn and develop deeper understandings of situations or experiences that are different from our own. Games are able to put us into new worlds and new characters' perspectives, allowing us to be Jedis in galaxies far away or rogue night elves trying to save a village. Game designers control elements of the game to create constructs that allow us to reposition our thinking and consider new experiences. When we play these games, we're actually learning about what it's like to fight against the dark side or to become a hero of Azeroth. As you play through Hannah, she'll become a part of your life. She'll chat with you in real time, just like your friends and family. She'll wait for your response to her messages so she fits into your life easy and without hassle. You'll work together with Hannah to help solve a mystery that she can't solve alone. In doing so, you'll be immersed in the role of Hannah's friend and you'll explore what it's like to be the friend or family member of someone experiencing domestic violence. As you play, you'll also be developing an understanding of some of the ways that domestic violence affects those experiencing it. Video games are so good at helping to teach us things because they can immerse and engage us in a way that no other medium can. Rather than reading a book or watching a movie, when we play a game, we're interacting directly with the story that we're being told. If the game is teaching us something, it usually teaches us a skill, such as how to jump, and then requires us to use and practice that skill throughout the game. We'll often need to demonstrate our skills in doing this have developed in order to demonstrate success and progress in the game. An example of this is our ability to jump in Mario. We need to learn this at the very start of the game, but later in the game, at a boss battle level, we'll need to do this to the level that we can do it in rapid succession whilst under pressure in order to defeat the boss. When Hannah messages you, you'll be given the choice in how to respond. The game will encourage you to use supportive language skills with Hannah and give you many opportunities throughout the game to practice doing this and keep trying. Ensuring that you choose supportive language options will help your relationship develop and increase Hannah's trust in you, eventually allowing her to confine in you and look to you for the support that she needs. The skills and experiences that the player learns in Hannah are designed to transfer directly over into the real world. Players of the game will have a raised awareness of DV, which is the first step in helping reduce incidences of this in Australia. Players will no longer ask a friend or family member experiencing DV why they haven't left yet, as they understand how dangerous this can be. Players will now understand that the self-esteem of those experiencing DV can be very low, and will know how to use supportive and non-judgmental language to help rebuild the self-esteem of the victim. They will be equipped to begin help the family and friends along their complex journey to accessing support services, supporting them on their journeys from DV victim to DV survivor. And I just wanted to take a quick second to acknowledge if you or someone you know is experiencing domestic violence, support services are available. Uh, 1-800 is a good place to start. They're a national service and they offer contacts and counselling Australia-wide. Um, if you're in immediate danger or know someone who is, you should also uh, get in touch with the police. So Hannah is expected to be released on both Android and iOS by mid to late 2018, so please keep an eye out for that. And uh, thank you very much for listening. Um, is there anything we can do to um, help support you or the game in between now and when it's released?
Thank you. Tweets would be cool, just keeping up to date with progress. I love feedback, so if you think of anything that you'd really like to see in HANA or anything um, that you, you feel like would be useful in a game like that, then please tweet it at me or HANA and like we can see about chucking it in. Um, we're doing some focus groups with other women who have experienced, uh, well, other groups, sorry, who have experienced domestic violence as well. Um, so I want to make sure that it's not just my story, but that it's a lot of people and their story as well. So always happy to have a chat if you like. How can we give you money? <laughs> Thank you. Well, money is always appreciated. <laughs> because before when I said iOS and Android by end of 18, that was very, very hopeful. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, please just send me a, a DM, um, and that would be awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Come another massive round of applause for Susanna. <laughs>